Hello, this is JW Greenbaum bringing you Gaining an Edge, the show where we discuss, review, examine, look back upon, and generally enjoy knives. So underneath the camera today, we have a very, very cool custom knife, and that is the McNeese PM Mac 2.3.5. Yes, that is the actual name. Yes, I have blown six takes, although no, two of them were not related to that. One actually was my scale malfunctioning, the other one was uh, a scam caller calling halfway through the recording. But yeah, this is a really awesome knife. It is a custom knife um, from Jonathan McNeese, and this is a knife that I think is basically a Chavez Redencian 229 beats a Chris Reeves Sabenza. That's my opinion of it, and it has some of the same strengths and weaknesses as both. We'll get to that eventually, but uh, first off, we are going to measure the knife. I feel like this is deja vu here. And it is 3.5 inches because, yes, this has a superb blade to handle ratio um, for what it is. And I, I mean, you know, there are not too many knives these days that really take blade to handle ratio into account. This one does. And it is 7.75 inches overall. It's actually rather compact. Uh, superb ergonomics, by the way. But yeah, very compact and also very, very hefty, which I like, but I understand. Yeah, I understand not everyone is going to like that. Matter of fact, let's get out our scale, and if it doesn't malfunction this time, well, let's see uh, how well we do. Okay, so it's 4.49 ounces. Um, uh, it read 4.54 the last time, but that was when it was malfunctioning. So, um, yeah, not a light knife in the least. Let's get out our Kaiser Knives Denim Knife Roll. At least I finally got to this again. Um, and by the way, it's got a great action. Um, it is a very shallow carry knife, as you're about to see. And for me, that's okay. But I understand some people aren't going to like that. You can, by the way, fix that. Uh, if you take a Hinderer deep carry pocket clip and, and uh, switch it out, you can get a deep carry clip for this by just using the hinderer clip. Um, I've seen that modification three times, including once by a person who I know, not particularly well, but I do know. And uh, yeah, so there you go. It is solvable. You also got a, a lanyard hole. So let's get out our size comparison knives. Those being the Ontario Knives Rat Model 1, which obviously has quite a bit of overhang. Um, it's a longer knife. Thinner knife, though. Let's uh, pull this back out there. I'm sorry that this take is sounding exhausted, but when you do over half a dozen, you're not going to get it. Uh, yeah. So, much smaller with the Rat 2. Um, our token Spider Co. Paramilitary 2. This one is in CPMS 90V. I believe that's a DLT Trading Company exclusive. If not, it is a sprint run that I got there. Um, and uh, let's take out our token large EDC knife. It's actually a pretty decent comparison. That's the Cold Steel Recon 1. That actually has very similar uh, sharpened blade, but as you can see, it is far, far longer. Um, one thing, though, that it is also capable or er, comparable in, I'll, I'll, I'll about to show you that, is this, the O-Knife Night Claw. It's actually got comparable height. I would say the Recon one is roughly about that tall. So it is a taller knife. It's not a pocket hog, but it is a taller knife. And everybody's favorite toenail clipper, the Kershaw Platform, which as you can see, yeah, much, much smaller. So the McNeese Mac PM 2.4, PM, the McNeese, okay, so I, I'm going to tell you right now, I hate the name, just call it the PM 3.5, or the PM 2, the, the PM, or the, the Mac 2, I, I, I literally cannot say the name, I'm trying, the PM Mac 2 3.5. Come on, that is the clunkiest, worst name that you can give a knife if you're using alphanumeric designations. Come on. With that being said, I literally cannot find anything else to dislike about this knife. 
I love this knife. I hate the name, but I love the knife. And fortunately, the name isn't offensive or really, really stupid. So yeah, the McNeese PM Mac to 3.5. Clunky, but it, yeah, it, it, it does work. You've also got a very, very practical design here. And I think one of the things regarding this knife is just how practicality oriented it seems to be. And maybe the, you, you might need it in hand to actually realize that. But once you do get it in hand, you're going to go just, wow. The, the, like everything about this knife seems to have been designed for practicality. And of course, that is a great thing. Um, we have obviously this jimping. It's very functional. It's not sharp. It looks sharp, but it isn't. Um, and, but it works. It's very <laughs> grippy. Um, it just, it really grabs your hand. The, uh, the, the lines here are just so well executed. You've got the, um, the milling and the titanium. This action falls shut. Just so, so nice. I, I, I just, I don't have enough nice stuff to say about the design of this knife, which obviously is far, far more important than the name. Now, not everybody, unfortunately, is going to be able to afford this one. It's between $495 on the low end and $595 on the high end. It all depends on if it's like plain tie, which the $495 version is, all the way up to anodized and milled, which I think the $595 version is. This one is the Urban EDC Supply exclusive with the Saigeha pattern on it. Um, but it has a plain tie scale. It's basically the plain tie version. It's been a little bit uh, gussied up, I guess you could say. Dressed up, maybe. Uh, also, I love the stone wash finish on the blade. It is so well done. And you are getting a great steel. You're getting Magna Cut, made in the United States. And of course, yes, it does have a custom heat treat. So this is a really, really nice knife. Great edge holding ability, great edge geometry, just great blade geometry. There's just so much nice to say about this. You, d It's thin behind the edge, but you do have this thicker blade. Again, that kind of reminds me, it's kind of Chavez-esque um, to make up a word, but it, it's also got some things in common with the Sebenza in regard to the, just the titanium, the feel. Um, that aesthetic, I think, is a little bit closer to a Sebenza. Like, let's say you wanted a Chavez, but you wanted the Sebenza aesthetic. Yeah, this is the knife that I would pick. The PM Mac, in certain numbers here. Um, so, yeah. Now, one thing that I will say about it, because, you know, that actually does remind me of a Chavez in probably the only way that some people aren't going to interpret as a negative, but I don't, is the lock bar. And that is, the lock bar is really, really sensitive. If I, am, if I were to so much as put my finger on there, this thing would not open. Um but it'll just fly open if you keep your finger off of it. So yeah, that's something to just be aware of. It's got that in common with the Chavez as far as the extreme lock bar sensitivity. Now let's uh, do some slicing with it because yes, it is very slicey. It's very thin behind the edge. Good thing. So, um, I mean, it's durable. It's, it's you know, it's not in any way underdone, but uh, yeah, it's thin behind the edge. It'll absolutely slice, and as you can see here, this is compromised cardboard, and it's going through this pretty nice, so pretty nice, pretty nicely, um, and there, there you can see how compromised the cardboard is. It finally fails, but yeah, there you are, uh, and of course, our packing peanut. So, yeah, there you go. Nice clean slice. Okay. So, yeah, if you want to get something that is kind of Sebenza ish, but a harder use knife, uh, yeah, the McNeese PM letter soup, uh, alphanumeric soup, 
it is for you. It is a great knife, except for the name. I, I, I just, I can't warm to the name. So, with that being said, if you if, if you do have between four hundred ninety five and five hundred ninety five dollars, you are looking to drop that amount of money on a knife. This is a very good knife to drop it on. So this has been J W Greenbaum, having brought you getting an edge, a show we discuss, review, examine, look back, fun, and generally enjoy knives. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you could comment, I'd be very grateful. It's also good for the algorithm, so everybody wins, and I will of course respond to you. And also, please um, be aware that subscribing will make you eligible for a giveaway that I'm going to have, hopefully, very, very soon, is it within the next couple days, for a Spyderco Military 2, a Rosecraft Blades Little River Bend Skinner, and some swag that will get sent to three lucky individuals uh, who will be drawn at random. So this has been JW Greenbaum, signing off and wishing you a great day.